Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a privilege. I am so glad to have been the privilege to come. And uh, I'm just I'm just overwhelmed. I, I listened every day when they preached and they taught and they wrung my neck and ripped my heart out, stomped me in the ground, picked me up, said, you haven't cried enough, get back on the ground again. And uh, I listened to Brother Kilgore's fantastic description of the holy anointing oil. And I was sitting on that front row as I've been since I've been here. And I was just hoping in my heart. Now, you know, magicians think funny. We, we think crazy things. I was wishing that that Kilgore guy had a bucket of that stuff back here. And that just when he really got the juking and messing around, that he'd just go and just slap it right over towards me. I'd open my mouth and drank it. I'd just... I wanted it so bad on my garments. I wanted, I wanted it on my head. I wanted it, I wanted it so bad. Oh, praise God. I was wondering if there would be anything left in the Bible to preach. But I have a word for you. The Lord assured me before I came, so... He took this scripture out so none of you could use it. And I've been sitting on it for three weeks. And I really do. I think it is not the icing on the cake. It is the candle that's going to sparkle. And I direct your attention now to the word of the Lord. First Kings chapter 18. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Kings 18. Thank you everybody that has told me you have prayed for me and encouraged me for your friendship. It is such a grand thing to fly eight or nine hundred miles or a thousand miles and come to a house full of my friends. I am I'm a very strange person. I really don't think there's any enemies here. I'm so dumb, I actually think everybody thinks I'm gay. I really do. I don't think anybody dislikes me. If you do, you're missing out on something. Hallelujah. I will not spend my life chasing shadows. I will not look for a pill of a hun hidden in a Pentecostal robe. I do not believe the barbarian is on my trail. I'm among friends. I refuse to admit some things into my heart. I refuse. I close my heart to them. I will not let them defile me. I read now 1 Kings 18 and 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Reading verse 40, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Karma. And he cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees, and said to his encourager, Go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. 
And he, Elijah, said, go again. Go look for your sign if you need one. And he said, there ain't a thing in the sky. And Elijah just smirked and said, go again. Go again. I want to preach for a little while with the help of the Lord. Formula for a cloud burst. Formula for a cloud burst. Now, Father, bless the word of the Lord to our hearts and accept our thanks for what you've done in this meeting. And I need you to help me, please. Just one more time in this great meeting. Illuminate and electrify us. In the name of Jesus. Let me vanish away and you have the preeminence. Let the people be blessed. Let the people be water soaked. Let the people leave dripping and drenched from a cloud burst. In Jesus name. Everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. I need a glass of water. Please. It's okay. Uh, I think if you will give your own self the thought for a few moments, this entire conference has been pushing towards this service. Every message, every characteristic the Spirit has brought to our illumination has somehow just kind of just kind of pushed us to this point tonight that it is the will of God for us to enjoy a cloud burst that we feel the winds of revival challenging us, blowing on us, stirring us. But I want you to know that there are those among who still look to the sky and say there's nothing. There's nothing. And I'm here to tell you, I say, go again. Go until your nothing becomes something. Did you hear me, your sister? Go again. Until your nothing becomes something. Go again. Until nothing brings thunder in your soul, brings vibrancy in your spirit, shakes you out of your apostasy and your lethargy, stops you from living on the sermons and prayers of other people, and the word of the Lord comes fresh to you, and you, like Elijah, hear the voice from another world, and it says, Show yourself to Ahab, and I'll send rain. We are living in a generation, possibly the last one, who have adopted the creed that there is nothing. There is nothing to marriage. There is nothing to virginity. There is nothing to honor. There is nothing to a distinction of the sex roles. There is nothing to purity. There is nothing to righteousness. There is nothing to holiness. There is nothing to religion. There is nothing to salvation. And the Holy Ghost is telling us tonight, go to your Ahabs and say to them, go again. Go again. There is something besides your nothing. For the victory belongs only to those who refuse to take no for the final answer. I'll go as slow as you. I will. I 
want you to know that Elijah was a living legend that was hunted. He was despised. They did not bring him into Ahab's palace to give him the Nobel Peace Prize. They hated his guts. They hated his eyeballs. They hated his brain. They hated his mouth. They hated everything about him. He was the cat that walked into Ahab's chicken party and said, It ain't gonna rain until I tell you again. I want you to know we've got the same God of Elijah. And if we can exercise our faith, we can shut up the heavens and we can open the heavens. Hallelujah. When we come on the scene, we are in the verge of the last of a three and a half year drought. There is pestilence. There is disease. Animals have died everywhere. There's a stench of rottenness all over Israel. They are searching for the preacher. I'm telling you, I'm going to challenge you with something that the Holy Ghost challenged me. Why don't we live up to our heritage? Why don't we do like Jesus said? If you don't believe my words, believe my works. Did God inspire James to write that Elijah was a man of supernatural passions? Of light passions. That means he got scared. That means he got lonely. That means he wondered. That means he tasted every spectrum of the emotional frame that you and I have. Yet this guy that didn't have any more of God than you've got could walk into the palaces of God and say, I, I, Captain, I'm going back to the earth and do like you told me. I'm going to shut it up until you tell me to do it again. We've got to become men of passion. Too long. Pentecostal, holy roller, Jesus name, apostolic, tongue-talking people have lived in the arena of their emotions and their feelings. I want you to know you can have as much victory without an ounce of feeling. You can have as much God without an ounce of emotion. God said, I'm coming to live in you, and I'll never leave unless you kick me out. I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. They hunted the preacher. He was responsible for a national disaster. Oh, just magicians are crazy. I love to walk into President Reagan's office and say, You ain't got to worry about rain no more in Louisiana. Amen. <laughs> 
Jesus don't ever drop the ball. He don't even dribble slow. Now you watch this. I want to. I want to. They talked about all this stuff. I've heard this. Open my heart. Unburden my heart. The most beautiful thing about this whole meeting, and I'll be a preacher, is that there ain't been nobody here with a badge of personality. And the Holy Ghost took this meeting out of our hands and moved us around like a bunch of chess players. Fit us in the spots. Fit us in the spots. So that when it's done, you won't even remember my name. You won't remember anybody else's name. But you'll remember the God of Elijah. You'll remember the dimension of power. Your faith will be in God. It won't be in a personality. It won't be in an individual. It'll be in Jesus Christ, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The Amen and the Everlasting. The root and the offspring of David. The bride of the morning star, the lily of the valley, he that was, and he is, and shall ever be. I want you to know, if you can release your faith, anything is possible. Now, I'm not preaching for your response. I pastor a church with a ring on. I'm used to it. I tried. At 15 months I've been in that, that place. That's been God's school for me. I've preached camp meetings and conventions and been blessed to preach great church revivals and been in a lot of places and God has blessed me more than I ever deserved. And I know what it is to preach in a church like this or Brother Ewings or Jesse Williams or Tommy Craft or Kenneth Haney, places where things are smoking, hitting, getting, and going. It's so easy to preach when folks are juking and jumping and moving and grooving and slipping in a sob. It's easy. I want you to know you find out how much you're worth when you preach a bunch of duds, and the word of God is still the same, and it's still got the same power, it's still got the same authority, it's still got the same victory, it's still got the same glory, it doesn't matter if you believe it, it's still God's word. I hear the sound of abundance. And I don't care if it's hot and the air is dry and the ground is parched. God said, show yourself to Ahab and I'll take care of the rain. seated for 30 seconds. You may not understand my bulldog tenacity and why I noticed some of you came by and have told me, oh God, Hortle, you're a mad man out of the pulpit. That's you all in the pulpit. We watch you when everybody preaches. You're on your feet. You're spitting. You're going crazy. You're raising your hands. You know why? It's everything to me. It's everything to me. I don't have a bank account. I don't have a bunch of indulgences for my wisdom. I don't have a lot of things hidden away. I don't even have a family that serves God. I'm the only cat that's got the Holy Ghost. You're my family. We've got to believe this thing with everything that's within us. We need to pour ourselves into it. Everybody repeat after me. It will rain. I said it will rain. My dad said it would. All I gotta do show myself they have. That you gotta do. Ahab is looking for you, but he don't know where you be. You can build yourself an astrodome for Jesus if you want. 
and there'll be a two million Ahabs that will never find their way to your church. He's looking for you. Why? To a somber lips. It ain't rained in three years. He's thirsty. Would you like to have the mayor of your city and the legal counsel of your city and all the hoppy topsies in your city not to like you because when you pray, you shut up heaven. Now maybe that's just vain and God delivered me from vanity. But I would love to get into Regan's place. In fact, I'd like to go one step further and go to the United Nations building. Say, all you cats with your tornadoes and your problems in Liberia and all the trouble going on in Israel and everything going on in West Germany going bankrupt and England's perverted, a bunch of Twinkies live over there and France is broke. I want you to know I'm going to give you the biggest problem you ever had. I've gone into the parlor house of God and I've touched the hem of his garment and I'm telling you, it ain't going to rain again until I come down. You say you're crazy, then I'll die crazy because I've got life passion like Elijah. I'm a man of life passions like Elijah. And God didn't love him anymore than he loves me. Hallelujah. I hear rain. I hear rain. see no clouds, but I hear rain. I hear a bunch of negative thoughts that say there's nothing, but I'm telling you, go again, go again, go again, until it comes. He may have seen it for another minute. Why not do it like this? Why not? Doc, you don't know the hell I'm going home to. You think I'm kidding? I preach my guts out. Get my belly buttons laying on the floor of that church. I turned myself inside out to try and have revival. I've wept and slung slap from wall to wall. I've cried until my eyes just swollen. I've asked Jesus, ain't there anybody in this church that believes like me? Ain't there anybody in this church that wants revival? Not that anybody in the church where our pastor believe that we can call for rain and rain will come. I want you to know I'm a desperate man. I'm a desperate man. I've got to have some rain or I'm going to die. Oh. Listen to me. Somebody give me a Bible and some Bible verses. I don't want to preach for a while with the help of the good Lord. You know, this is so much fun. What do you want? It's real. I want you to read. First Kings 18 and 30. I'm talking to you about what I feel from the Lord that we can go home with. A formula to bring about a cloudburst. A formula. Point number one. You've got to hear from God yourself. Elijah, the Bible said, the word came to him. I like that. He's the only cat he thinks that knows God. And all them fake religions, who by the way, have the same heritage that he had. They's both kosher. Ahab was kosher and Elijah was kosher. They're both you boys. Hear me now. Now you, you think I'm not saying that. You go check the root of some of our charismatic, some of our Pentecostal Catholic, some of our Baptist Coastals, 
And somewhere in their background, they had someone that knew about Jesus named baptism. They've been in a Pentecostal service somewhere. We have a relationship with each other. But the word came to Elijah. And I like that. It tells me when it's dry and you're all alone, he knows where you be. And he can bring his word to you. Just drop it on you, Doc. Would you like it just to drop on your power? I want to show you something. Read for me, if you would. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. Yeah. And all the people came near unto him. He wasn't keeping the news that he got from another world to himself. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you no more Jesus is God. I've told you for 10 years. I'm going home to Gainesville, and I'm going to tell them cats that don't know Jesus is God, that Jesus is God. If we're not careful in Pentecost, we'll, you can jump around in a, in a beautiful thing like this, and we'll tell each other, man, wasn't that good preacher? Oh, God, Jesus, God, did you hear that? Can't keep you talking about this. Did you hear us? Oh, you didn't get it. You see that two go hang and slap in the Milky Way? Man, we got it, God. We got it. We go, hey, that's fine and dandy. But when you walk out, it's got to come out of you. And you've got to gather the people to yourself. And you've got to tell them what happened to you. You've got to share with a starving, thirsty world that there's a word from the Lord. That he, and he repaired the altar of the Lord. Step number two. You better hear from God yourself. And you better rebuild that which is broken down in your life. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, baby, even though you got the word from the Lord, there ain't no cloud burst until you fix the altar. Right. Never. I'll win. Right. Right. He didn't ask nobody else to build the altar. God, we're in a dimension of delegation. Got four to four assistants, 18 music directors, all kinds of people walking on Jesus in heaven have mercy on us. How about some of us preachers building some altars for ourselves? How about us preachers sitting on our faces before God and rebuilding some things that have fallen down in our lives and broken down in our lives because the starving and thirsty multitude will never enjoy the cloud burst until a preacher builds the altar. Right. How to do it. I'm going to get to the good part. Now we're going to shout. Yeah. Watch this. Read. And Elijah took 12 stones. Yeah. According to the number of the 12 tribes of Jacob. Yeah. And unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. 37. Read verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. Hear me, Lord. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned the heart back again. Oh, here we go. Now, let's juke a little. Yeah. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Stop! Yeah. Hear from God. Rebuild that which is broken down. And then pray with a proper motive. He didn't want nobody to know his name. He just said, God, let everybody know that you're the Lord. And I've done this because you told me to do it. And show these people your great mercy. And when he finished praying with a proper motive, the fire from another world fell down on an altar and it stirred the whole congregation that was watching the demonstration of God's power. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to.
to sound a negative note. I hate negativism. But I'm going to tell you the truth. We've had three days and two nights. Well, three nights and two days. God, I don't even know what day it is. I've been sleeping standing up, I think. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the fire has fallen again and again and again. Now listen to me. And we've heard the word of the Lord. And for two days, Mike Williams and me and a bunch of other cats, Sister Terry, all of us up here, we've been pouring our guts out to God, rebuilding some altars. Yeah. Can I tell you without you losing my thought, the fire that fell did not end the drought. Yes, sir. No. That's right. Talk about that a while. And if we leave tonight, and I don't get to finish this next 20 minutes, you're going to go home, and you've heard the word, and you've rebuilt the altar, and the fire has fell, but it's still dry. There's still thirst in the land. It hasn't rained yet. We've got to go one more step beyond just the demonstration of the fire. We've got to have a cloud burst in our church, in our life, in our city, in our nation, in our world. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Listen to me. I'll try to go a little faster. If you go a little faster. Read for me verse 40. And here's what happens after the fire falls. 40. 40. 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the promise of Baal, and like it. let not one of them escape. Don't tell him to give this one to you for free. And they took them. Hold it. This is for you, bud. I like your spirit. Spook me out a little bit. I like you. Run, that's it. Somebody shout. Somebody dance. He said, take the prophets of Baal, read, and they took them, took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon. Wait a minute. Going to take two things to kill that which is false. The fire and the water. Yeah. Come on, there's a whole bunch of folks that are feeling the fire of God. But God wants us to lead them to the water in Jesus' name, baptism. And that's where everything that's false will have its last burial. The Bible said when you're baptized in Jesus' name, you are circumcised in your heart. Circumcised. Die. Amen. But you ain't got no power to kill that which is false until the fire falls. Right. But even after, and this is what I've been, I've been promising God, Boy Scouts, I'm going to help me God, I, Boy Scouts, I'm cross my heart and don't hope to die. God, when I get home, in fact, before I get home, I'm going to do everything I can to kill everything that's false in me. Everything that's plastic, that's synthetic, everything that's insincere, everything in my life that's not committed, that's false stuff. That's false stuff. That's not what God will bless. That's plastic. That's like that rubber fruit. It looks good, but you can't eat it. <laughs> that's it. That's like that garbage where we get into a service and it's not going so good. We get that we get Jesus on the cross of God. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Lord. God, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hogwash. Yeah. Hogwash, right. He that drinketh of the water that I shall give him, it shall be in him a well springing up 
springing up, springing up into everlasting life. I don't have to play the Pentecostal game. I can't stand the lie to myself. All right. I'm going to do it. Great. Great. All right. Read a little further for me there. Bishop. And slew them there. Slew them. And Elijah said unto Ahab. Now watch this. This we're going to have to up. Eat yes. and drink. Yes. Well, there slob. is a sound. Yeah, you slob. Of a bunch you're of... You're 65 slob. You're married to the queen of the ERA, you creep. <laughs> She's been running your house since you married the old bag. We gotta get delivered from that crud. That ought not be among us. That ought not be among us. That built out of hell, friend. That built out of hell. God doesn't want that. You men are supposed to be the priests of your home. You ought to pray more than your wives. You ought to fast more than your wives. You ought to know the Bible better than your wives. You are a priest of your house. You are a priest of your house. Yeah. You may have a seat in a minute. <laughs> Let the single boy shout. That's all. Even the preacher was kind to that slob. You might say, Brother Arnold, you're being so rude to him, I am trying. I despise a creep who's raised under the oracles of the Ten Commandments, who knew the thunder from Sinai handed down from generation to generation. You know what? To whom was given the ordinances of God? To whom the prophets were sent? And then that slob walk away and worship Baal. Oh, yeah. We need... The stirring in my spirit ever since I've been privileged to get licensed with this grand fellowship was I was not raised Pentecost. I was a hood in the streets of Brooklyn. No brag, no big story. I ain't been a sing sing for a hundred years. I ain't got shot the firing squad twenty times. I was just a creep in the streets with no mama dad that loved God, never served God, never showed me the way to God. But God came into my home when my wife and I were getting divorced. He woke me up in the middle of the night. Never a Pentecostal gave me a track. Never talked to me. Never invited me to church. But God dealt with me, spoke to my heart, said, I'll give you one more chance to get your life right. I'll take your life from you. And my wife had been raised Pentecostal from an orphanage as a little girl. I told her what happened. She said, I'll take you. I'll show you how to find God. And it's killed me with Pentecostals who have a heritage. Walk away. Walk away. From the greatest thing this side of eternity. Well, beautiful. Yes. Let me see it. God bless you. That's why I say he has a slob. You're here tonight. Thank you. And your backslide, you're a slob. Ah. Mr. and Mrs. Elijah. That's the truth. You say, Brother Arnold, you got to have love. I do have love. I don't have this men's and pens and stuff they call love. That is nothing but lust with no discipline. Right. Love has got rules. Love has got regulations. Love has got boundaries to it. Right. Yes, sir. I never could understand in my life. So folks can backslide. Now you say, oh, Brother Arnold, be careful. I am careful. Every day of my life, I make sure I'm in love with him. That's the secret. Every day I pray and I seek his face. And there's lots of days. Now, I'm not as spiritual as a lot of you folks. I know it. I'm a trying, but I, just give me another year of the Lord of Terry. I'll, I'll be a, I'll be flying high. 
But there's lots of times I pray. I don't feel an ounce of God. I know you teach against that. I'm not saying you're wrong. You're probably right. I'm the good. I'm the potato head. I'm the guy that hasn't reached it yet. But there's lots of times in my prayer life that I don't seem to break through. But I pray anyway. I seek anyway. I worship anyway. Because I know that he is greater than my feeling. He is greater than my emotion. He lives within my heart. My faith. I love him. He loves me. I will not walk away. That's it. Let me, let me get to my son. I want to show you something. Elijah was so kind to Ahab. Because he knew Ahab was a creep, a slob, a sissified husband. Well, when they even tried to run the preacher out of town, that creep had his wife write a letter. <laughs> That's the truth. Right. Sissy. You look at the creep. I wish they had a videotape of the slob. <laughs> I went to buy a neighbor's vineyard. He won't let me. Bible said he turned his face toward the wall. That's right. Stuck in a little old me. He wouldn't let me have the vision. His old wife came in with the ERA petitions all over her body. Say, what's the matter, Bruno? What's the matter, baby? <laughs> said he won't give it to me. Deliver us from that kind of garbage. Deliver us from that sissified, winky mess. God, give us some Elijahs. God, give us some men of God. God, give us some people of visions and dreams and authority in the Spirit of God. Now, don't misconstrue what's happening here. I know we're praying Johnny Jack in the box. I know that. Please don't miss a great message just because you think I'm trying to get you to stand up. I preach so long to sinners. I can preach just as good to sinners as I can stand us. I've learned not to preach for response. I preach out of love. I preach out of compassion. I preach out of responsibility. I preach out of obligation. I preach out of duty. Woe is me if I don't preach. Well, it always feels better to a preacher when everybody's going, Woo! but it don't add no power to the book. It don't make the devil any bigger, any smaller. If you go, Woo! or you go, don't matter at all. His word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away. My word ain't a never, 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 never going to pass away. Yeah. Hallelujah. <sighs> Let me get to my son. Read. Okay. I want you to read verse 41. Watch this. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, get up, and do the thing you're best at. Eat and drink. You socialize and slob. That's all you know how to do anyway. Get your party. Be careful. This fellowship becomes a curse. Right. Talk about it. Let that poor slob pray in here. Well, get someone to pray with him. Yeah. You build an altar around him, and you pray, and you and I cultivate the fire of God to touch him. That's why Jesus was so strange. I have meat that you know not of. I have meat. I'm dying at another table. Ahab, excellent Jew. Right. All he could do was eat and drink and fat cat it and talk. Big belly creep. <laughs> Catch up the mayonnaise floating out the side of his face. <laughs> Belching all over preaching. Bah, bah. Ah, what are you going to do about that new preacher in town, Elijah? I'm going to get my wife, send him a letter. I'll get Jesse to take care of him. Now you watch this. Please don't miss what I'm fixing to say. 
Read. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now wait. Elijah, you're a weirdo. You hear things. He never said, Behold, there is a sign of rain. He said, Behold, sound. What could they have here? Lettuce and potato chips make swaps and all. <laughs> oh, yeah. I persuaded of God that he would raise up more Elijahs among us if we could push our plates back a little more often and a little more consistently and we could hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If we could tune in to another world, to another switchboard and hear something. You don't have to hear about him here. Now listen to me, brethren and sisters. He didn't feel nothing. Nothing. Oh, if, I could, if I could finish my message on that, it'd be a masterpiece. He, he didn't feel nothing. nothing. All right. He didn't see nothing. nothing. But the nut says, it's like that stone came for you. Okay, yeah, leave me alone. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to catch you in the race, Doc. I want it. I want it. I want the counsel of my elder brethren who don't see anything or feel anything. Yet you can walk up next to some of them and they say, I've heard from the Lord. And you don't feel nothing. No, I heard nothing. But this guy says, Ah, oh, hear the sound of abundance of rain. Now listen, Ahab, being that you got your seasons passed at a restaurant, you get in your taxi cab and go eat. No eat. Go I want to show you something. I'm not trying to be funny. I, I know I'm, I'm just a weirdo. I'm so glad this meeting let me come. I is what I is. That's all I is. I ain't nothing else. Tommy Crab taught me eight, nine years ago. Be yourself, Jeff. Don't ever be nobody else. Don't waste God's time trying to be like somebody else. I am what I am by the grace of God. That's all I am. Right. Read for me, would you, Bishop? And so Ahab went up to eat and drink. See? Now watch, watch, watch how the roads separate. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. One's going to the pancake house. And one guy is going to Mount Carmel. Wait a minute. The fire has already fallen. All right. But there's something talking to Elijah from another world that's saying, you need more than a momentary demonstration of fire. You need more than just a big old mess coming out of the sky. Exactly. You need to climb up into Carmel all by yourself and begin to pray the formula for a cloud burst. Yes. Yeah. Now read for me. I'm almost there. And he cast himself down upon the earth. Yeah. And put his face between his knees. Yeah. And said to his servant, his, his encourager, go up now like this, and look toward the sea. Yeah. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven Time. Now wait, you, you pardon me just five more minutes here, because this is the funny part. You got funny this stuff. is the funny part. Okay. You know, I think that guy's name was Gehazi, or he used to be a servant somewhere in the book I remember reading about Gehazi. But whoever that servant was, he wasn't worth a hill of beans. 
And the Bible said that he sent the servant to go look. You know why? The servant needed a sign. Elijah didn't need none. No. You know why? He's learned to pray by the promise and not by the barometer. Right. Yes, God. And the world's looking at us and saying, you poor Pentecostal slob, all you got is a promise. Well, the guy that promised, they bumped him off, but he's still alive. Right. <laughs> and if he can come out of the grave, I think he can come back out of heaven, too. Come back again. If he can take the keys of death and hell from the devil, I tell you, he can give me a key to open the cloud first and send some rain into my church, into my city, into my life. I want you to know I got power because my dad promised. Promise? Be seated another minute. Now what's this? Just hold on. Don't lose me, please. This servant, now I'm just, I'm reading something into this. It might not be right, but it preached good anyway. Well, it sounds good. He sends that, Sister Teddy, he sends that servant out here, Cap. Go look up in the sky. <laughs> he comes back and he says, I don't. Nothing! There's a man giving a few words. I want to tell you what I think. I think in the ten precious years I had privilege to evangelize for about eight, I've had a lot of them slobs come to me when I tell them, man, I hear something in the spirit. And they'll look at you with just one blockbuster of a word. Nah. I believe God spoke to my heart. Nah. Now, maybe you've never known how devastating the word nothing can be. He could have turned to the guy and say, Now, look, preacher, <laughs> you had an exciting day. Your emotions have taken your better judgment away, Pew. That goes for you. You, you bumped off 850 pockets. You strung blood from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. You've rebuilt altars. you brought restoration and revival to Israel. You've even prayed and called fire down from God. And everybody wants to be in your fan club. Now that, your brain has slipped a chain here somewhere. I can see that guy saying, in the name of God, why did you tell Ahab? I hear a sound of abundance of rain. Couldn't you just say it was twinkle? Couldn't you just say there might be some precipitation coming? Have you got a call for your rock in? Have you got to ask for a Florida hurricane? My God, man, you're out of your mind. You had a hard day. He kind of comes back to console him and says, Yeah. Nothing, boss. Nothing. Nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chief. Nothing. Listen, we're, we're climbing on the backside of Carmel. And maybe they won't even remember what you said. Yeah, they won't. They go hide. And that's why some of us have not entered into the gift ministries and the power ministries because we've been afraid to say some things. But Jesus said, when you want something, if you believe that you can get that thing, you can have whatsoever you say it. Right. Do you know that God never had anything until he spoke it? Right. Spoke it. Get it wet. Yeah, right. Never mind what God thinks. What did he say? He said, let there be. Boom. Yeah. What's this? Ain't 
angel comes to a virgin girl named Mary. And the word of the Lord is with the angel. And the angel says to Mary, you're going to have a bambino. You're going to have a little boobola, a little baby. And she just says, uh, uh, how can this be? I, I'm not bad. I've never known a man. Now watch. She did not doubt the angel. Never. She just asked, how? How? That's a good question. Says the power of the Most High overshadow thee, and that holy thing which shall be conceived in thee shall be the Son of the Most High. Now watch this. And she said, Be unto thy handmaiden according to thy word. According to thy word. According to thy word. Now watch this. Here is the key. The word of God must get into your spirit. Yes. Mary, by her declaration of faith, took the word of God into her spirit. Now watch. This is how healing works. We'll give you a little lesson. When the word got into her spirit... It was child's play for that word to get into her flesh. Once it's in your spirit, it's a short journey through your flesh. Right. And when the seed, which is the word, got in her flesh, the word began to wrap itself with intestines and eyes and hair and lips and arms and legs, and the word that went into her spirit now became a living body inside her body. When you pray for the sick, preacher, let me give you a little lesson, would you please? Stop praying so much. Stop saying things to people. The Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We will not let sin attach itself to our bodies. Why do we let sickness attach itself to our bodies? For sin and sickness were both nailed to Calvary. Nailed! Oh, yeah. I like that. How many times have you prayed? I remember two or three revivals I was in. We were called on to cast the devil out of some old bag. She pulled the devil. I got next to that old gal and said, Come out of her in the name of Jesus. The boy wants you to know that devil got in that body. Changed that voice and said, No! I never told them, but I just said, kind of said, okay. <laughs> As you have. You know why? Jesus said, whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Bind on earth is bound in heaven. If you speak to the mountain, it must obey you when you tell the devil to come out. He must, but he's going to see if you will do what the book says. Continue to say, continue to say, continue to say, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it. There's going to be rain. There's going to be revival. There's going to be victory. There's going to be healing. There's going to be growth. Say it, say it, say it. Say it. You can have what you say. You can have what you say. If you don't doubt, you can have what you say. Have it. Go on ahead. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Just go ahead. Oh, plenty of time. <laughs> now unless you're running out. I'm going to tell you what. When we leave, the feeling most likely will dissipate 
between here and East Airlines. Oh no, the memory will stay, but the feeling, the vibrancy, the goosebumps. And you might have a temporary spell when you get home, but 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 about ninety five percent of it will be gone. And when I walk into my pulpit, that slob that lives there will say, Nah. I'm gonna hear him say it. Yeah. And he's gonna say, No. Nah. I'm gonna say, Yeah. So we're going to have a tug of war. But you ought to see who's on the end of my rope. <laughs> you ought to see who's anchored. You ought to see who's playing anchor on my team. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah, there's going to be a crowd burst if I say it and believe it. If I say it and believe it and I'll say it and I'll say it and I'll say it and soon it will come. It'll be here. Give me, give me five more minutes. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus. Hear what I'm telling you. You're a doubter. We must be able to pray over and through a lot of things that speak so vehemently to us and say, there is nothing. Oh, yeah. I taught three weeks in our church, brethren, on the power of speaking faith-filled words. It revolutionized our church. The devil jumped slap on a bunch of people and tried to kill them and choke them and make them sick. And I was one of the first ones. <laughs> hey, Doc, why don't you get your diapers off and realize that when you challenge that old book of man, he ain't as scared of you, Doc. He'll pick you up and come through your brain in a second. You've got to have the Holy Ghost bubbling in your soul. You've got to have the power of God. You've got to believe that what you say will happen. Will it happen? I get up out of bed, Brother Jonathan Urshan was preaching three nights of prophecy for us. And I got up, somebody was on the phone, and when I got up, I, I got so dizzy, my head got light, and uh, I fell over, and my wife didn't know she'd gone down the hall, and I crawled back up, and I went and kind of threw up a little bit, and tried to steady myself, and I walked, and the more I walked, my head would just get so light, and I just fall, fell against the wall. I got sick again. And uh, well, the thought came to me, it's just a stinking devil. Yeah. Say it now, I shot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I walked down the hall to get Brother Jonathan Hershon to answer the phone, and the whole room was going around. And I just kept doing our standard repertoire in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus don't know what his name is because we keep saying it all the time. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Jesus name, 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 Jesus, 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 Spit and slop all over your chin. Won't give you no more back that. I'm telling you something. I don't know whether you believe it or not, but I does. You can revolutionize your whole walk with God if you can learn how to speak the word of God in faith. Right? Now watch. I got down to Brother Jonathan's room and I went to grab the doorknob and I went deep, totally sack over. Boom. And I'm laying on the ground there, man. My head is going around. And I'm saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name, I'm healed. Lord, you said that if I speak your word and believe what I say shall come to pass, I shall have whatsoever I say it. I don't feel healed. I don't look healed. I wish we could get off that crud. I wish we could 
to get out of that garbage cemetery. I don't feel healed. I don't look healed. I don't act healed. Listen, the word said, if you say and believe in your heart that which you say shall come to pass, you can have whatsoever you say up. You notice know, I didn't say you can have what you said. That'd be past tense. Say so, yeah. That means continues to say. You don't think I got Bible? Say, hey, Jesus, also man of the universe, king of kings and lord of lords, demon and a boy. And the Lord just says to him, he didn't give him all that chiropractic garbage. He just said to him, come out of him. And the devil didn't come out of him. I mean, the Lord talking. And the devil said, so what? <laughs> and the Bible said, it took that boy and slapped him on the ground yes. and rolled him like a wild dog till spit and saliva and foam rolled out of his skin. You know what he's doing? Two things. Hurt Jesus' reputation and try to intimidate him. Right. You know why? I'm going to tell you something. He did not do that miracle as the Son of God. The Bible said he had dominion as the Son of Man. That's why he said, what well, I do, you do. That's why some of those Pentecostals said, my God, what can I do with Jesus? This is the Son of God. Well, if that's your hang-up, so are you. Yeah. Behold, now. 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 Not tomorrow in the wild blue yonder. Now. Now. Are you the sons of God? Now. Now. That nailed your excuse to the wall, didn't it? But the Bible said he did the miracles as the son of man. Read it. So the Father had given him dominion and power over all flesh because he is the Son of Man. And the Son of Man, who has Jehovah living in him, says to a demon-possessed boy, come out of him. And the devil tries to get Jesus to renege on his word. All right. Yeah. All right. And Jesus wouldn't do it. He just held on. He held on. He held on. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. No. Come out. No. The word of the Lord says you're subject to God's word that's been given into the authority of human beings. You must come out. Come out. If you won't get chicken, he'll come out. Yeah. If you won't stop praying, you'll get well. See, I love some of you. There. Deep water, shallow mind. Pass it by again. Pass it by. I'm telling you, Assistant General Superintendent, one of the greatest men ever known, and I'm talking it disrespectful. There is too much stinking sickness among us. I believe that. My sins, best the mansion, were laid on his back. My sickness was laid on his back. I won't tolerate the devil putting a lust spirit on me. Then why do I tolerate the flu and pneumonia and bronchitis and rheumatism and arthritis? Brother, that's uncleanness and you are holy. Hold it. Hold it. Talk to it. I know where I am. That's all right. I want to try one last thing. It's a long time. I know I'm sorry. Keep it talking off. you got a thing to say. Read, if you would, please, Reverend. And he said to and it came to pass, and it, and I like it. When I see you next year, Stone King, I want to say, you're coming to pass. 
That's the banging. When I see you next year, the Lord, I'm going to talk to you. I give up my hour of prayer. I've been praying two and three. I'm fasting until my belly button falls off. I'm fasting until I get to the place in God that I can do the works of the Spirit and I don't have to apologize because things don't work right. God promised me a cloudburst in my life. He promised to send rain. I've got to hold on to it. I've got to claim it whether I feel anything or not. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. Oh, that's it. Give me five more minutes, please. Go ahead. Take about an hour. Oh, God. You don't know what it is to sit through two and a half days in this one. You're all your ass. Don't get it. Come on. We'll give you, we'll give you 30 minutes. That's it. Okay. Now I said, and it came to pass. We At the seventh time. Yeah. That is sad. Behold... There ariseth a little cloud out of the sea. Of the sea. Now, I love God's ability to bring reversal. Now, you know, if I was God, being as smart as I'd be to God, I'd conjure the rain from above. But yeah. God loves to do things cool. It comes out of the sea. Right. So instead of bringing the water from above... He said, look, honey, just to show you, I was on the same plane with you all the time. I'll lift the cloud up out of the earth. Uh -huh. So you can watch it go up, come across, and come back down. <laughs> but it was on your plane of existence always. You ain't got to pull God down. He be here. Right there. You know, it's so hard to say, oh, God. You want to go, oh, God. Ah. Well, you either believe you got God in you or you don't. All right. That's like a bunch of dumb shit the as we go calling off to some God somewhere. We got Almighty God living inside of us. We ain't got no part of God. We got all there is. Yeah, everything. Fullness. All right. He said, I see a little cloud coming up like a man's hand. Like a now, man's hand. I got this in, I got this in the, in the, in the motel. So I'm going to share it with you because you're so sweet. I got this in the motel. I've never seen it, never heard it, didn't buy a tape, didn't steal it, nothing. I heard it. I was praying. Brother Mike Williams had gone to get some stuff to, for tonight to come. And while I was praying, I just started saying that scripture, Lord, you see a cloud, a little cloud, like a man's hand. Now, in the fantasy of my mind, or the revelation of the Spirit, I don't know which one it was. It just seemed like in my mind. Now, maybe because I'm humorous and me and God love each other. But I see that hand. Anthony, I see the hand coming out of the earth. And the poor servant is looking for any kind of sign. And the hand's going. Yeah, here I is. Here I is. Here I is. Look at that hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to know, in my mind or the fantasy of my mind, I don't know. As I walk back in that motel room, you know, the more it feels better, the faster I walk. I was walking in that motel, oh, Jesus, and I see that hand just. And I said, Woo, Jesus. I said, Lord, what you do now? And I saw that hand when it came out of the ground into the sky. Give it one of them numbers. Then I saw that hand go across the sky and go. Oh, yeah. Until the next verse, the Bible says, the sky becomes black with clouds that are laden with rain. What's bringing it? That hand that came out of the earth is swirling the air currents and bringing rain from another area and bringing it into that. Why? Because there's one lonely preacher on the side of Carmel that's not satisfied.
wide with a little bit of fire. He's promised a cloud burst. He's promised a rainstorm. Yeah. He's promised the victory of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he's not going to stop praying until that hand fills the whole earth with the glory of the Lord. He's seen it just another five minutes. Then. Please don't think I'm some idiot just trying to get my shot in the pulpit. I begged Anthony Mangan five, six times. I don't want to preach. I begged Brother Mangan Sr. I'm not the guy to preach. I feel like Babe Ruth's bat boy up here. They've had the biggest sluggers, Luke Garrick and Stan Musial and Ted Kozuski and Duke Snyder. And now they got little Pee Wee Reese coming up here trying to just... I'm doing the best I can. I feel like God gave me something that will give you a revival in your church, in your life, in your heart. We need more than fire. We need more than fire, right. And the Bible said, and he saw the man's hand. How he held it. Bishop saw it. And he said, he said, go up and say unto Ahab, yeah. prepare thy chariot. Yeah. And get thee down, right. that the rain stop thee not. Wait a minute. The only thing that Ahab ever addressed was the answer and not the problem. Right. You won't hear Ahab one time saying, oh, I mean, Elijah saying, my God, this is a terrible drought. My God is dry. My God, he's a whole bunch of problems. And how many times do we go to God and say, Look at all these problems. And God says, you dummy, why don't you pray the answer? Because you're going to have exactly what you say. Right. I feel sick. You'll be sick. Why? Because words release faith from your heart. And if you speak negative words, you must have a negative harvest. I'll prove it to you by the scripture. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 11, that Jesus went by a fig tree and looked at the fig tree and he didn't get no fruit. So he said, no man eat of thee henceforth from this day. Now watch. It was no big deal. They didn't have a band. They didn't have a cameraman. They weren't giving out tapes. He just said, nobody eat no fruit you no more. Let's go, Paul. we got to go downtown Jerusalem. Let's go. Now, I mean, it was no biggie. It was no biggie. It was simple stuff. A couple of days later, they come walking by. And old Pete, I love Pete. He always trying to figure everything out. Yeah. Old Pete looks at the fig tree. And the dude is slapped right up from the roots. I mean, it ain't just withering, Doc. It's gone. Now watch. Watch Peter's terminology. Master, behold the fig tree. That you cursed. Cursed. Jesus ain't never cursed in his life. Never did. He said, you cursed it? Did he say it? Ain't it in the Bible? You cursed that tree. You know what? He's right. Here's the principle. Jesus spoke negative to it. And it's equal to a curse. I just can't get my church going. Don't say that. We just can't seem to break. Don't say that. We just can't get these. But shut up. It's going to be rain. It's going to be rain. Rain. Right of it. It's going to be rain. That's positive. That's positive. We curse people in our ignorance. God convicted my heart. Got some backsliders to start coming to 
to our church, pray up, numbs go through. And then me and my ignorance, talking to some dingling. They say, you know, they've been in this church three or four times. Watch, release negative spirits. They probably won't stick. Yeah. You have opened up a seed of negativism that will bring a harvest. Oh, yeah. I've been on my face at this altar because I've criticized some of our officials. I didn't like the way they did things. And when I got over coffee with someone, I said, ah, oh, okay, I just, I don't like that. And that's a bunch of garbage. And on and on and on. Until I got out of there, I felt dirty. Oh, yeah. And God brought that to me when Sister Mangan talked. And I poured my guts out to God and said, forgive me for being a fool. Forgive me for launching negative spirits towards my leadership. I probably don't understand all the facts that they have. I don't understand the problems and the situations they have. I need to speak positive thoughts to them. I need to say positive thoughts to them. Your church will grow. Your life will be fruitful. God will give you revival. You give it? Talk about it. Talk to us. All right. Talk revival. He said, you cursed him. That's when Jesus gave the answer. He said, child, if you speak to this mountain and tell it to be cast in the sea and doubt not in your heart that that which you have said said, not pray, said, shall come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. You'll have it. And I'm sitting in this church right down that front row blowing my brains out with these preachers eating me alive. And all I can say is, ooh, when Arnold gets home to gaze, we Bible going to hit that city. We're going to pray them. We're going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Baptize them. Put the heater in them. Fire them. Do anything. But we're going to have the Bible. We're going to have healing. Signs and wonders. Going to have miracles. Signs and wonders. Going to have revival. Now, yes. Going to have revival. Yes, we are. Yeah. Going to have the power of the Lord. We are. Moving in on this coast. I will release my faith in the positive power of the Word of God. I want want you to know, if you sow yourself to Ahab, I will send rain. I will send rain. I will send rain. I will send rain. rain. Show yourself to Ahab. Show yourself to Ahab. Show yourself to Ahab. I will send rain. I will send rain. You can have what you say. You can have what you say. Believe in your heart. It will come to pass. You will have rain. You will have rain. You will have rain. You will have rain. rain. God never fails. God never fails. You will have rain. Everybody say it with me right now. I will have rain. I will. Let's love him. Now! 
Send down the rain. Send down that Holy Ghost rain. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain, Lord. Send down that latter rain. Come on. Send down the rain. Send down the rain. Send down the latter rain. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain, Lord. I need that Holy Ghost.
saying to me what it said to his fishing buddies that day. Simon, go launch out in the deep for a catch. Yeah. Now, boss, now, boss, you just raise a cough in the shop. You, 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 you just play with wooden trinkets and things. I'd be a full-fledged professional businessman fisherman. I know wherever bass is. I know wherever ever, uh, mud crack is. I know wherever catfish is. I know wherever things is. I done beat that water to a frog. <laughs> I've been to every one of my smoke houses, and they're just ashes. I've cast my net out till my fingers have fallen off. <laughs> Jesus smiled and said, I appreciate the oratory. You know what he said? This is what makes him the sweetest dad I ever had. He said, he said, Pete, go again. Try it again. One other time. Who else ever told me or thee, watch, to try again in the very same place you just failed? He didn't ask you to move to a new location like we're famous for doing if I don't go to your church, you have five years, you play hot stops for Jesus. <laughs> you know why you do that? Because you're chicken. So you throw the net out, and you come in with a dumb starfish, and a bunch of snails, and some clams, some seaweed, some nothing. And that still small voice says, go again, go, go again. Do it again. Nevertheless, at thy word, Lord. Now watch that we don't miss what God wants us. If you read the fifth chapter of Luke, he said, Nevertheless, Master, at thy word, watch, I will let down the net. And the net break. Hey, the net break. You ever wondered why? Jesus said, read it, let down your plural nets. And he said, I'll let down the nets. <laughs> and that's why the net broke. God don't have us in nothing to lose stuff. Get some faith. It don't take no more extra effort to throw out two nets at one. Talk about it. Set down your nets. Let them down. Put everything you got down.
the soul. Never the soul. It's going to be so big, I'm going to have to build another one. Michael, all these, these long-distance telegrams that I've been getting in the mail, the Bible in the Philippines, the Bible in Manila, Ecuador, Jamaica, on and on, Ford, Alexandria, Jackson, Shreveport, Hades, everywhere, every time I, you know, there's a vanity about us folks when they, they call you, you think you're important, and they say, oh, long distance, oh, yes, oh, this is for you, but you go, another, another rainstorm for you. Uh, as long as it's called there for a preacher. Uh, I'm a preacher. Oh. Ooh. Man. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Yes. Thunder, lightning, and rain. Huh? Oh, where? Oh, Yeah, Will Williams is there. Yeah. Welsh, yeah. Kraft, yeah. I know you ain't, yeah. I know they all is raining, raining. And if you're not there, when the phone rings, we'll speak. Yeah. Yeah. I know rainstorm, right? Lightning, right? Oh, right, right. uh, where? I'll go get them. But from this meeting, I feel like when I get home, it's going to be ring, ring. And I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to say, hello. This is J.W. Arno, his eminence. What? Ring. Ooh. I 
I feel his power. There shall be light in the evening time. Rain, light. 48 hours ago, we kicked off believing it's going to be done. You're going to leave this place, evangelists, Bible school students, pastors. You're going back to your area. Thank you, Brother Jeff Arnold. We're going to have revival. Saints, we're going to have revival. Alexandria, we're going to have revival. Rain, 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 rain. Do 